So, first of all, two reports out today show there's been a huge expansion in renewable energy capacity across the world. But there's also a warning that it's not enough to reach global net zero targets by the middle of the century. And now, first of all, I just want to point out what the IEA have said about this. They say that uh, this year's record renewable electricity additions are another sign that a new global energy economy is emerging. Would you agree? It, it's really good news, isn't it? Yeah, it is good news. I mean, it's uh, the extension of a trend which we've been seeing for actually for quite a long time. Um, and especially after uh, uh, in the last couple of years, it's been very difficult to get financing for new uh, fossil fuel projects, which you know, is a climactically very positive step. So, you know, this is part of a trajectory which we've been mapping. The, the question is, is the rate of change sufficiently fast? Um, and I think you know, most views would be that no, it isn't. But the but there are reasons to be optimistic that uh, you know the rate of change will it will increase uh, to the appropriate levels. Well, yes, and we'll come back to that. But Michal, what do you make of this? Do you think it shows that the world is taking climate change seriously? I think those answers are never binary, and uh, we always have to ask how can we do more and faster, and how can we accelerate the rate of the transition while making it while making it equitable and, and sustainable, uh, worth it for investors, worth it for private companies, worth it for individuals, so we can all uh, benefit from those changes. Now, the point here is that this is a virtuous circle potentially between policymaking and between um, uh, the private sector. Policymaking has uh, sent positive signals, as the IEA notes in its report, that have facilitated this transition. Continuing those um, uh, signals is what enables faster deployment of renewables, but also we need to remember the, completing, the competing and the completing side of this, which is fossil fuels. The more we legislate and regulate fossil fuel consumption, exploration, and so on, the more that we are more, uh, the more that we can uh, advance renewables. And that is a really important thing to, to, to do those things to, in tandem. Now, the policy measures that will advance renewable energy and drive down the costs of those will enable us to do more, uh, to, uh, to have even more ambitious policy measures in place, bringing um, uh, forward, for example, India's uh, uh, NDC target, which is currently a net zero by 2070, and currently facilitated by the current prices of renewables, bring those down with faster deployment globally, and we'll be able to bring that um, uh, even faster. Well, yes, and Navraj, do you agree with that? Because uh, as you were hinting, the, the IEA is saying at the moment, the rate of increase is not fast enough to hit those net zero targets. So how much is this down to governments, do you think? And how much will it be down to market forces? Well, market forces are working uh, very conveniently for a lot of renewables. Uh, so in large parts of the world, practically everywhere, uh, renewables are cost competitive or undercutting the price of uh, new uh, fossil fuels, which is why we're seeing the balance of uh, new capacity that you described earlier. For the purposes of governments, though, what, what we're seeing is that whilst a, a lot of progress is being made in a lot of places, there is still really strong um, uh, financial pipeline for new fossil fuel investments um, through export credit agencies, through the Belt and Road Initiative in China. So, you know, there's, 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 there are a number of different stories here. There's the, you know, open market, liberal um, world. And then, you know, there's the larger part of the world, frankly, in which this isn't uh, the case. So, you know, if you look along the Belt and Road, you'll see huge, uh, uh, the pipeline of uh, coal-fired power plants, the uh, transmission of uh, fossil fuels is still in a relatively healthy place. And that okay. is just not at all consistent with a one and a half degree or even a two, and a, uh, two degree world. And Michal, very briefly, um, there was an agreement at COP as well among some countries to stop in, in investing in overseas fossil fuel plants. I mean, that's progress as well, isn't it? Uh, but we need to remember that not, invest, not investing in coal, for example, is important, but building infrastructure that is very carbon intensive, um, such as the Belt and Road Initiative, is something that will lock us into many years of, um, of, of carbon intensive uh, usage of that infrastructure. And those things are really important to remember. So like Navarrete said, we really need to um, um, make those policy steps now, both on the fossil fuels 
and on the renewables, and those work in tandem. The sooner that fossil fuels uh, will be um, not uh, competitive, and some of them already uh, aren't with renewable energy, the easier it will be to phase those out.